Welcome back everyone to Elevate Her to Go Jess Mars and today's video is about comparison. Let's start off with our Bible verse, shall we? 2 Corinthians 10 12. It suffices to one. Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are condemning themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. Pardon me, sir. What did you just say? Yeah, that was like actually so sweet and rude at the same time. See, I think that comparison can be a really good thing, but it can also be a really bad thing. Now, I don't know about you, <laughs> but for me, I feel like comparison has been probably one of the biggest things I've had to deal with because not only would I compare myself to how successful I was with someone else, but I also would compare how I looked, how skinny I was, how pretty I was. How my hair looked. Oh, they, they're they dating someone. Oh my gosh, I'm going to say something that I've never told anyone outside my sister. And I only told her <laughs> the other day. But for such a long time, before I would speak to a guy, I would, when I would look at him or be with him, I would think, hmm, is he cute enough for other people to think that we make a good couple? Like, is this going to be a thing where people look and be like, oh, yeah, no, you guys make a really good couple. Or it's going to be like, oh, ew, it's not really cute. The fact that I used to think like that blows my mind. Like, I remember I would look at other people's, <laughs> I would look at other people's husbands or partners and they're not that attractive, right? Anyway, to me. And I remember thinking, oh, so they can date an ugly guy or a guy that's not that attractive and they're doing fine. Hmm, is it just me? Am I the problem? <laughs> when I tell you that really put a, a different perspective on my life, I realized what am I actually thinking of? What am I comparing? I'm comparing how, what? Like, what am I actually comparing? That other people are going to think that my life is good. But what? why should I care? Because they're not living my life, right? I can't believe I even said that. That is so wild. Please actually judge me if you like I was judging myself when I found out too that's how I thought because you know when you think a thought and you're like no this isn't true I'm not going to keep thinking it and then you think it and you say it and you're like this is exactly how I've been most of my life great I don't know if it's in the Arab culture but being Lebanese we oh, I should say especially in Lebanon they compare everything oh my god but my daughter has this oh no no but my daughter has this oh she's working here oh no 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 she's working here it's always like they always try to one-up each other so I guess it's a uh <laughs> it's something I've adapted without even realizing it and then I realized and I was like oh okay I gotta really switch my thought process because that is actually very unhealthy to think that way I just feel like other than relationships for me it's been my weight I've always compared myself to how slim someone was or how nice their bum was. Can I just say, I do have a bigger lower part of my body. I'm like wider down there, right? And it was never in. In high school, I've always had wide hips and it was never pretty, right? And now that skinny is in, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like my biggest fear. <laughs> because for so long, even when I would weigh... I think I weighed like 57 for such a long time. And I was like, oh my God, this is not skinny. I need to be skinnier. Like I would, I have on my camera roll so many photos of my body try to doing before and afters because I would see all these beautiful models. Hence me being a makeup artist as well. I work with a lot of models. Yeah, I don't know if that helps, but it's not their fault. And I see how gorgeous they are. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Miss Salib, they're so beautiful. I love how healthy they are. I love how slim they are. And oh. I, it made me realize how unhealthy I was being because I would literally not eat for so long because I was like, no, I want to be skinnier. Or there was a time where I considered taking a Zempic. And I remember I spoke to a pharmacist I know. It was my friend's dad. And he said to me, no, no, darling, you don't need it. And I was like, that's really sweet of you, but... I, I want to just, I want to drop down. I want to be like 53, 54. And he's like, what is wrong with you? And I think hearing that from like an older person as well kind of made me realize, wow, I'm so consumed on how I look that I'm not really focusing on the bigger picture, right? 
especially when your friends are all slim or a type of way and you're like no i, I want to look better oh my gosh oh my gosh okay i used to think i had really fat fingers <laughs> Because I would see all these beautiful girls with very slim, slim fingers. And I had a friend and she was so slim, but she had thicker fingers, right? And I remember we'd always hold hands. And when I saw my hand next to her hand, I was like, huh, I actually do have slim fingers. What the hell is wrong with me? This was when I was like in high school, by the way. I've grown. <laughs> I've grown since then. <laughs> but it's these thoughts that we think that we never share. I've never shared that with anyone. Because I was just comparing myself to someone else now, but in a negative way to make myself feel better. D does that make sense? So it's such a toxic thing. And people always say, oh, no, don't compare, don't compare. Let's be completely realistic here, yeah? You can do so much work on yourself, but you might slip up and compare yourself one time. You know, especially if you see on TikTok or YouTube or wherever, wherever the case is, people doing so well so quickly and you're like, okay, I've been doing this for five years or six years or three years and I've been consistent. I, I'm putting in the hard yards. I'm trying new things. I'm being authentic and yet they blew up in a month, right? Let's say even three months. Let's give them a bit of credit there. And I'm still where I am, but that's, oh, my darling, that's where I feel like you're going so wrong. Okay. Let's break it down. So for me, I think the reason I was comparing myself was because I just knew I, I had no self-worth. I did not feel good about myself. And even if that meant putting someone else down, always in my head, I wouldn't ever say it to someone. You know, I'm only rude up here. Yeah. Well, I was rude up there. <laughs> it made me feel better because I was so consumed on trying to be perfect, trying to, you know, be so good to everyone because I wasn't always a good girl you know I was a cheeky naughty girl but not in a bad way but like you know just breaking some rules and stuff like that so it always comes down to you and now with such a flood in social media I feel like and all like so many people are on here and that's amazing to see all these creators doing amazing things oh my gosh. but when you are mindlessly scrolling, because it's an addiction, when you're, when you're addicted to your phone or when you're addicted to trying to prove to yourself you are better than what you think you are based off other people, that's where I feel like you're going so wrong. So I believe step one is awareness. Figure out you're comparing yourself. And it could be even in a good way. Good way. We'll get to that at the end. But right now, let's focus on the bad way. So if you are on TikTok and you... I say TikTok because I feel like everyone is on there. Personally, for me, Instagram is just for my portfolio. I have fun with it and that's it. It's like a whatever thing now. Sorry, Instagram. But I feel like when you are comparing yourself to TikTok or on pe in, when you see people in real life, it's so easy to do that because you are putting yourself down by doing that. And you might think, oh, no, I'm not. But you are because as soon as you say, oh, but this person has what I want in a negative way first of all you're kind of telling that person they don't deserve what they have second of all you're also saying that you deserve that what if your blessing is meant to be completely different right and i get that people want to be influencers and all these great stuff like i'm all for it do what you want right but what is the reason behind it oh my god when i was starting youtube years ago I loved YouTube. I That was how I learned makeup, by the way. <laughs> I loved YouTube. I wanted to make content and I would do makeup tutorials, right? Even though I hated it, I would do it because I'm like, I want to be big. I want people to watch me the way I watch them. But what was the reason behind it? I would literally look at creators that would start and I'm like, oh my God, like, why are they so big? Like, I feel like I'm pretty too, you know? And they're not, they're just conventionally pretty. Like, there's nothing special about them. So why the hell can't I get big? Blah, blah, blah. But what was my focus? on becoming what famous on becoming a youtube star for what reason though was i there to actually help anyone in my makeup tutorials no i just wanted to be big there was actually i was like i didn't even enjoy doing it that's why i stopped because i'm like i don't enjoy doing makeup tutorials because for me my makeup it's very simple glam i change up a few things but i'm not i'm creative in different ways right i just don't find fun i just don't find it fun okay je ne sais pas so I stopped doing it and then 
because I was comparing so much, I ended up doing nothing about it. I just stopped YouTube altogether. I stopped doing so much social media. I was just like, nah, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm over it. I'm over everyone blowing up so quickly. I was like so against TikTok for so long. Oh my gosh. This life is so precious. I saw this little girl. I say she's little. She's 24, right? She's still little. And she had cancer. And she was posting on TikTok every day just about her daily journey and, you know, what she was doing in life and stuff. And she died. She passed away. And one of her videos was like, you think you have so much time and you're so consumed in everyone else's thoughts that you actually end up not really living for yourself. And when I tell you, it brought me to tears. One, because she was such a, she seemed like the most sweetest soul ever. But also because we we compare ourselves to the point where we dig ourselves in a hole. And I don't even know if we want to really get out because we think our life is so bad or we don't have enough money or we don't have a partner or we're not married yet or we don't have, I don't even know what people want anymore these days. And when we see someone else have it, and we don't have it we're like oh cool like of course this is my life and they get to have that because they're so pretty of course they get to have that because they i don't even know they're famous or things just always work out for them it's just a thing no pardon me absolutely not stop consuming a bad thing so what i did and i hope this will help you is i honestly just stopped I unfollowed so many creators <laughs> because they weren't really inspiring me in any way. They weren't. I still follow a lot that inspire me, but I unfollowed so many people, right? I also started to really reflect in- inwards and I started speaking to God more and asking why I am comparing so much. And that's when I realized I have no self-worth. <laughs> not now, not now. We are, we are much better now. But I had zero self-worth. I had no confidence. I was literally putting other people down consistently in my head because I wanted any form of validation to feel prettier or to feel better or skinny enough or whatever the silly things that we worry about are, right? And it's like the funny thing is we we do this, but there's always a choice. If I think someone is so skinny, but I can eat healthier, right? If I think that this person has blown up so quickly, maybe I need to do more work or maybe I have to realize what is my actual passion? Why do you want to be so well known for? What do you want to be known for? making people feel good, inspiring them? Or is it just because you just want to be good so you can get free stuff and go to events? That's fun, but it's it can be so superficial if you have no meaning behind anything, right? So really look inwards. And that's a hard thing to do. And people don't really like to do that because no one applauds you when you're working on yourself. No one's going to sit there when you're in the dark crying about when you realize how low your self-value is. They're not going to come and be like, you're doing so great, sweetie. I'm so proud of you. That actually doesn't happen. You don't get a reward. You don't get anything afterwards. But what I, what you do get is a whole different set of eyes. And I feel like you look at the world so differently and in such a better light. I'm not saying you're going to always look like this because we are human and we're like roller coasters. Sometimes we go down slightly and that's fine. But you will start to pull yourself out of the trenches just before you get into deep right but you can only do that when you actually start to look inwards and in my opinion asking the holy spirit for guidance is such a un- underrated thing right we are so fortunate that god left us the holy spirit in each one of us so why don't we use that to our advantage right so look inwards be like okay holy spirit tell me why am i comparing myself so much is it because deep down I wish I was at that level where that person is so then people can fight, people can be proud of me. The funny thing is we usually do it based on an agenda of someone else, right? So I used to always think if I was skinny enough, I'd be in a relationship quicker, right? If I was pretty enough, if my hair was straight all the time, if I looked like this, if my nose was like this, if my lips were like this, my teeth. I honestly thought that for such a long time until I'd see different type of people getting into great relationships and I realized you know what I'm comparing the wrong things I'm comparing the wrong things I'm my I'm not I'm not doing this whole thing right which leads me into the good comparison in my opinion sometimes comparison can be good 
for example, <laughs> I was at the gym today and I was doing legs and I really, really didn't want to do it. Funny enough, I used to love doing legs like five years ago. I used to, I think I used to literally only train legs <laughs> like three times a week, sometimes four, for years, like for, oh my gosh, so long, right? Maybe four or five years I was training legs until my brother, who's a PT, got me onto upper body and he made me realize that if I train upper body, I am not going to be massive because he's like, if you were going to be massive really quickly, every guy would be big. And I'm like, hmm, okay. And now I love training upper body and I don't like training lower body. It's so funny. I, It's just a new thing and it's happened. I don't know if you guys feel that too, but I do. And when I was at the gym today, I really, really, really couldn't be bothered. Like I had zero energy. I had zero. I was on zero. I was probably pushing, pushing a one, pushing. And I saw this amazing woman next to me and she, her body was amazing. I was, I always like, I'm just like, you just say that. Even though I don't believe in the evil eye, I just like to say, it. I'm like, oh, you, you little queen with all your muscles. And she was just training. I was like, you know what? That just like motivated me to push myself a little bit harder, right? So that, me comparing, I'm not comparing like one, how heavy she can lift because she can lift much heavier than me. <laughs> but I'm comparing seeing her push herself has made me feel like, okay, no, I'm going to push myself too. What am I doing? So that that sense of comparison I think is good because it's like, it's healthy, right? It's understanding like what the Bible says. I am not going based off, oh my God, she's, look, of course she can lift that heavy. Look how, you know, I was going to say bulky, but she's not bulky. She was muscly. But muscly she is. And instead I was like, no, she came to train. I'm going to train. I'm going to push myself. And guess what? You always feel better when you push yourself, even if it's just 1% extra. And I gave myself about 4%. I pushed myself 4% extra. <laughs> but I left and I felt really good, right? Another really healthy way to compare yourself is for me, when I see someone taking breaks, and actually focusing on their mental health and focusing on being closer to God and focusing on making sure that insight is is so much more powerful and it radiates more than out here. I think, yes, looks are important and I definitely think you should take care of yourself. But I think if you don't take care of here, actually there's no point of taking care of the outside. It doesn't really – they both need to mesh well, right? And I would see some women really, really focus on their mental health and focus on their affirmations and focus on making sure that they're so good here, right, that it radiates out, like reading so many books. There's a book that I highly recommend you read. It's called um, A Course of Miracles. Oh, my gosh, amazing. And I think it's How to Change Your Life or something along those lines. I'll find out and I'll put it in the comments by Louise Hayes. Yeah amazing books amazing books because they both also incorporate god which you know sprinkle that on <laughs> makes me feel much better but that way of comparing pushed me to be like i need to do better now it can turn unhealthy real quick because you're like look at how good they are and then it goes back into the spiral but if you only take it as as a grain of salt and be like okay their their energy radiates so beautifully you know what? I I need to do this. I'm going to I'm going to take the step. I think that's very healthy and I really hope that by you watching this video it motivates you and it inspires you to also want to take care of yourself internally because I promise you externally yes people can judge and everyone can see and fancy cars and all these expensive things they're so nice, right? But I promise you, oh my god, it really really doesn't last that long. Like I bought myself a brand new Dior bag in Milan. <laughs> And I was so excited, right? And I've won it a few times and I'm so excited. But then I was just like, okay, that's it. You know, it's it's just like, okay. Like, yes, of course people have commented on it because it's amazing. But what else? You know, whereas when you can feel so beautiful in here and you feel like you're closer to God and you just feel like you're truly helping people and it can be in a funny way it can be in any way making them look good or whatever the case is it's a different sense of feeling like you feel so much more fulfilled than always buying designer things or always buying lavish things and I'm not saying they're not good right we all love that <laughs> we love it but what do you love more do you love making sure that your well-being is good yes I would hope so, right? Do you do you want to make sure that your health is good? Oh my God, darling, yes, 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 right? 
So in this video, if you have stayed till the end, thank you so much for watching and listening. I just really hope that your biggest takeaways are unfollow those people. If it's your friends, if you're comparing yourself to your family members or your family members are comparing them, you know, to you, which happens so much in this gorgeous community. I still love our community. It's the best, but it happens so often, right? I just want to say that hear it. Let it go in one ear, out the other. Don't think about it too much. And as soon as you set, you find yourself thinking about it too much, I want you to literally stop and be like, okay, why do I care? Because there's a very good chance that they're probably either unhappy because you don't know, right? Or they have struggled in different ways. There, there's an area of their life that they wish they were like you. See, there's a gym photo and I love it and I, I want to try find it, but it's like, each person is looking at the other person like, I wish I had this, I wish I had this, I wish I had this. Not, we're never fully satisfied. We're never 100% like I am so happy and everything is perfect in my life. That is the beauty about life. There's always something. It's like an onion. As soon as you peel one layer, there's another layer, right? So please, please, I beg of you, catch yourself when you're comparing yourself to anyone else or when your parents do and even if you feel like standing up to them go for it I used to, I did that to my mom actually I was like stop comparing me to everyone else I am who I am and I'm trying to figure it out and I need your support instead of you trying to make me feel like I'm doing something wrong by not being like someone else and that's when you lose your self se sense of identity right and I promise you that conversation went really well and she's an Arab mom yeah <laughs> from from Lebanon so if my mom can can adjust to it it's just the way you sat the way you, your tone of voice and the way you say it i promise you i promise you they will understand because they were exactly like us right when their parents were doing it so please stop comparing yourself and if you are okay let's figure out why let's figure out why and then when you do it's such a liberating feeling because then when you start to compare yourself you're like oh i just need a sense of validation let me give it to myself you are so amazing. Your body looks so good. Look at your skin. She's glowing. Excuse me. Is that a star? Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, I got mesmerized right there. <laughs> you know, your soul is radiating. You're so angelic. Just be so kind to yourself. And as soon as you start comparing yourself in a good way, it doesn't have to be bad. Not everything is black and white. Not everything is bad. There's good to every little bad situation, right? And I hope... I hope you take something good from this. Let me know if this video has helped you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the button. Like the button. Hit the like button. <laughs> if you want to subscribe, go for it. But I really, really appreciate every single one of you. And I really hope that this video has helped you. Thank you so much for watching. If you are here to the end, I appreciate you all. Have a marvelous day. And I will see you next time.